the bedroom of the Empress Catherine the Great of Russia in her summer palace of Tsarskoe Selo, outside St. Petersburg, had the biggest concentration of Wedgwood Jasper tablets that we know of anywhere in the 18th century. The tablets themselves, sadly, were destroyed when the bedroom was shelled during the terrible siege of the city in the Second World War. And our knowledge of them is based on the photos of the room taken before the war. I apologize that these are the best photos we have, but despite their quality, they're good enough to identify the tablets. The Empress's bedroom was designed by her Scottish architect, Charles Cameron. To get a sense of this lost interior, I cannot do better than quote Shvidkovsky in his book, The Empress and the Architect. He writes, in this intimate room, Cameron tried to create an impression of the utmost unity and integration. In the manner typical of Robert Adam in England, the decorative patterns of the ceiling and the floor were of almost identical design. Above, all was light, with curving bands and fine radials converging at the center, enclosed in a circle, all precisely mirrored in the dark decorative parquet below. The walls of frosted glass overlaid on white flannel reflected a milky white light and were lined by fine rustication. The height of the bedroom was divided by an entablature. Above it, in the center of the two long sides of the room, were two large rectangular tablets of Wedgwood Jasper. One showed a Bacchanalian sacrifice here it is in close-up, and here's the same design in a surviving example in Wedgwood Basalt. The subject on the opposite side was a Bacchanalian triumph. You could see it on the left here and again in close-up. And here's a surviving example of the design again in Wedgwood Basalt. I'm using the titles for these designs given in Wedgwood and Bentley's 1779 catalogue of ornamental ware, where they are numbers 70 and 71. The shorter side of the room, opposite the windows, had a different Bacchanalian sacrifice tablet seen on the left here, and again in close-up. And this is a surviving example of the subject in Jasper. It's listed by Wedgwood and Bentley as a sacrifice to Bacchus at number 200 in their catalogue. Below the entablature, each of the long walls had two circular jasper tablets, one in the corner away from the windows, one in the middle directly below the large rectangular tablet. On the fireplace wall, these were two male Bacchanalian figures, each carrying his symbol of a thyrsus, basically a large pine cone on a pole. Here they are closer up. And here's a surviving example of the one on the left. The designs came from ancient paintings excavated at Herculaneum, shown here in the original publication of the excavations, Le Antiquità di Ecolano Esposte. From the same source were the two dancing nymphs facing them on the opposite wall. One is in the middle of this shot, the other is out of shot to the left, and here's a surviving Wedgwood example of this one in basalt, and the engraving of the original painting in the Herculaneum publication. In the corners of the short wall opposite the windows were two more circular tablets. They are subjects listed together with the Herculaneum figures in Wedgwood's catalogue, but unrelated to the Bacchic theme. One showed Marsyas and the young Olympus. It's on the far left here, partly hidden by the column. Here's a close-up and a surviving example in Jasper. The matching one in the other corner was Papirius and his mother, this time on the far right, partly hidden by the column. And here's one in basalt. Over the fireplace, 
and over the sofa facing it on the opposite side of the room were two small rectangular jasper tablets of a familiar Wedgwood subject, the dancing hours. You can see the tablet opposite reflected in the mirror. Further to the right, and on the right here, was a tablet showing five of the muses. Here's a surviving example. Another tablet showing the remaining four muses with Apollo was on the opposite wall and is shown reflected in the mirror on the right. There were probably 14 Wedgwood tablets in this exquisite little room. In addition, the fire surround was studded with 15 Wedgwood Jasper medallions. In 1782, the Russian government relaxed trading restrictions on foreign goods, and shops calling themselves the English shop multiplied in St. Petersburg. Peter Kappa was an English merchant based in Birmingham. That means his, base, his main business was probably selling English metalwork. He had been selling Wedgwood's tableware in St. Petersburg for over a decade when he wrote to Wedgwood from the city on the 12th of June, 1786, requesting something much more ambitious. Here's what he says. Sir, having had an opportunity of taking an order for some of your cameos or basso relievos, I have thought proper to avail myself of it, the more so as I have for a great while observed that many of them might be used in this country. But for want of being acquainted with the proper channels through which these things are disposed of, I never durst write for them on my own account. A feeble excuse. The person who has ordered the quantity described is an artist employed at court, and so earnestly does he wish to have them that I have a good security for the value of a hundred pounds, which is to be paid down at the shipping of the goods. And if these pieces are perfect and please, I make no doubt many more may be sold here on the same footing. I must therefore recommend this trial to your utmost care and beg you to observe that all the pieces of the order are to be different, not two alike. The word pair being explained in the order. I have seen one piece here which was exhibited to me for a pattern, viz. offering to Aurora with your name on the back. I should conclude from that circumstance that the order will be perfectly clear to you. And accompanying the letter is a document headed St. Petersburg, 12th of June, 1786, received 2nd of July, came through quickly, commission for sundry basso relievo work to be got ready by the middle of August. But as the whole could not possibly be expected by that time, it should not prevent the shipping of the goods. And that part which could not be ready must be left out. The list which immediately follows is the order to which Kappa referred and which he hoped would be perfectly clear to Wedgwood. From the way he introduces it, it seems clear that it was not written by him, but by someone else, almost certainly his customer, the artist employed at court. It's a set of instructions intended for both Kappa and Wedgwood. It reads as follows. Six pieces or three pairs of basso relievo in size about 28 inches by 12 or 13 inches, amongst which the triumph of Ariadne and Bacchus. These pieces, though called pairs, should all be of different subjects, taken from history or fable, all very well composed and distinct. The word pair signifies that the two pieces so-called should be exactly of a size or to be the companion of each other. Besides the old subjects that may have long been known of that size, if there are any new good subjects of this kind of work, a pair or two may be sent on trial. There's two or four pieces, but all different subjects. Six pieces, all different, to make three pairs of about 21 inches by 10 and a half or 11 inches, one of which is to be an offering to Aurora. 
10 or 12 pieces, all different subjects, to make five or six pairs. One of the pieces is to represent the wedding of Cupid and Psyche. The choice of subjects must be done with taste. These are thought to be about 21 inches in diameter and are round. All the above are things known at Mr. Wedgwood's. They are of a particular composition made by him, the ground of which is blue, representing a lapis lazuli, and the figures are white. The few mentioned above, such as the triumph of Ariadne and Bacchus, offering to Aurora, Cupid and Psyche, are already known here, and are pointed out to give an idea what the taste is and what the others should be. Wedgwood's first reaction on receiving this letter and its contents is likely to have been shock. This was an enormous order for enormous tablets, six at 28 inches and 18 at 21 inches in length or diameter. How many tablets of these sizes had he ever successfully made and fired? Fortunately, the ornamental ware oven books survive up until 1787. And although they're not quite a complete record of production, they're not far short of it. The dimensions given in the oven books are for the tablets before firing, and they shrank by one inch in eight in length when they fired. So an unfired tablet 28 inches long would shrink down in firing to a little over 24 inches. And an unfired tablet 32 inches long would shrink down to about 28 inches. So let's look briefly at all the Jasper tablets with an unfired length of at least 23 inches, which the oven books record as successfully fired from 1779 up to the date of Kappa's letter in 1786. From 1779 to 81, there are 11 tablets. The two biggest were 28 inches, so they will have shrunk down to about 25 inches. But after that, after 1781, very few large tablets were made. In 1782, there is one tablet, the sacrifice to love, blue ground, 26 inches. That's before firing. Then there's a gap of two years until another 24-inch one of the same subject in 1784. Two more of the same subject and size are recorded in green jasper in 1785. That's all. Four tablets in four years. So to sum up, the oven book record suggests that by 1786, Wedgwood had never fired a jasper tablet with a finished size as large as 28 inches successfully. The largest he had accomplished had a finished size of at most 25 inches, and he'd not made one of those for six years. The last published edition of the Ornamental Ware Catalogue in 1779 listed number 206, the birth of Bacchus, at 27 inches, and number 212, the triumph of Bacchus and Ariadne, at 26 inches, but there's no evidence that Wedgwood had actually made them at those largest finished sizes. In the last few years, he'd only been producing tablets with a finished size of 21 inches and producing them at a rate of about one a year. Now Kappa and his unnamed customer wanted 18 of those all at once and another six tablets larger than Wedgwood had ever made before. How was he to reply to them? His letter, addressed to Mr. Kappa St. Petersburg, is dated 22nd of July, 1786. Dear Sir, I have duly received your favour of the 12th of June with your commission of sundry tablets of my jasper to be forwarded about the middle or latter end of the next month, which I wish it was in my power to execute agreeable to your wishes, but that is utterly impracticable, for I have not a single pair by me. For besides that, the jasper teaware and vases have such a run as to have been more than sufficient to employ all my hands. I have six chimney pieces in hand, which as I now make pieces for the pilasters, as well as the middle tablet friezes and blocks, will take near 50 pieces. I would nevertheless have postponed some of these had they made a possibility of getting some ready for you in time for the last ship. 
but it's vain to attempt it, for I could not make a single tablet of the very large size your friend wants. In less than two months, they take so much time in finishing, drying, and burning twice a week each time. All I can do is to hurry on a pair of tablets, now in some forwardness, and send them, if they succeed, to you. I observe that your friend orders tablets considerably larger than they are asked for in this country, and I wish it were consistent with his design to have some of them less. They would come very expensive so large if I had the models by me, but that being the case with a few only, the time and expense for modelling the remainder of these sizes would be too great to think of. The price of my tablets, too, is unavoidably much higher than your friend seems to have an idea of, for to model and finish them in the manner I should wish to, in so fine a material as the jasper, the tablets ordered would, I believe, come to little, if any, less than £300. This is all I can say now to save the present mail, but will send a list of such tablets as I have or could get modelled by next summer, along with a few specimens I shall have the pleasure to send to you. The reference to the last ship is because the sea approach to St. Petersburg froze over between October and March, so that any goods not sent in September would have to wait until the following spring. We do not know whether the pair of tablets Wedgwood mentioned were ready in time for the last ship less than two months later. It's also likely that Kappa sent Wedgwood further instructions in the summer of 1786 in reply to Wedgwood's July letter. There was time for Wedgwood's July letter to reach him and for him to get a reply back to Wedgwood before the icy grip of winter stopped the ships. However, the next surviving item of their correspondence is not until the following spring. Mr. Peter Capper's order received April the 2nd, 1787, to be executed as soon as possible. Number 206, the birth of Bacchus from Mr. Angelo's cabinet, 27 inches by 12. 207, triumph of Cupid, same measurement. 208, offering to Cupid, 25 inches by 10 and a half. Number 212, Bacchus and Ariadne, 26 by 10 and 3 quarter inches. Kappa orders these four tablets by their numbers in Wedgwood's ornamental ware catalogue, so Wedgwood has no doubt sent him a copy. Kappa has chosen the biggest sizes listed in the catalogue, but there is an anomaly. Number 207, the Triumph of Cupid, which he wants 27 inches long, is only listed in Wedgwood's catalogue at 11 inches long. It's much too small to match the other three big tablets. The rest of Kappa's order is a list of smaller subjects, none larger than nine inches. It's followed by a list of items sent to London Warehouse August the 11th, but the list only includes the small items from Kappa's order. None of the four large tablets he had ordered were sent to London. The next item of their correspondence which survives is a letter from Wedgwood addressed from Etruria on the 18th of September, 1787, to Kappa. Dear Sir, on my return from a journey of three weeks, I find your favour of the 11th from Hot Wells to Mr. Byerley. I assure you I feel in the most sensible manner the disappointment which both you and the architect must be under in not receiving the tablets according to the expectations given to you. Indeed, I had not myself the least doubt of their being ready in the time allowed. And all I can say in excuse is that I could not, though I used every effort in my power, get them out of the modeler's hands in time for their shipping this season. I have at least got two of the large ones out of the kiln good, which will be in London on Friday the 28th of this month, and I wish you could have an opportunity of looking at them. The whole may undoubtedly be sent by the first ship in the spring if the architect and you think proper, and I feel the utmost regret it was not in my power to find them sooner. There's then 
another gap in the correspondence, until the one last surviving item addressed to Wedgwood from Peter Kappa in Birmingham on the 9th of January, 1789. Sir, Respecting the last tablets sent away, if you recollect, I mentioned that on account of the unexpected length of time that they had taken in executing, I was apprehensive that at the time of their arrival, the court architect would not be in Russia to receive them, as I knew he was meditating a journey to Italy. He may possibly be returned by this time. I only take the liberty of mentioning again the circumstance, as I wish you not to insist on being remitted for these goods till they are delivered, for even then I don't expect to receive the money in less than 12 months. But this I submit entirely to your determination, and you will remember that they did not get to Russia till more than 12 months after they were promised. This letter establishes that Kappa's customer was indeed the court architect, in other words, the designer of the Empress's bedroom, Charles Cameron. Despite the gaps in the correspondence, the main story is clear. The detailed specification accompanying Kappa's first letter of June 1786 was therefore written by Cameron. The four large tablets listed in Kappa's order in spring 1787 were for the bedroom, but it's evident from the photographs of the bedroom that none of them ended up there. Only two large tablets had been made for the bedroom by the end of September 1787. What Kappa calls the last tablets for the architect were sent to Russia in 1788. No lists survive of what was sent. We know that none of the eight different subjects specified either by Cameron in 1786 or by Kappa the following year actually ended up in the bedroom. Wedgwood's deeply apologetic letter shows that things had gone badly wrong. At this point, we're going to leave Wedgwood stewing in his own juice and go back to July 1786, the same month that Wedgwood received the first letter from Kappa. On the 11th of July, another British merchant in St. Petersburg, Benjamin Hawksford, wrote to Wedgwood. He had taken over the business and stock of another merchant in the city, John Ohm, who had died owing Wedgwood money. Hawksford sent his account of goods belonging to Mr. J. Wedgwood of London, found in the warehouse of the late J. Ohm, including four jasper tablets. One large bas-relief jasper tablet sacrificed to Bacchus, 16 guineas. Two ditto Apollo and the Muses, 18 guineas. One bas-relief lion and horse, 8 guineas. A fortnight later, on the 25th of July, Hawksford wrote again, you may rely on my doing all in my power to dispose of the goods received from the estate of J.O. I am at present endeavouring to introduce some of the bas-reliefs for a new room fitting up at Tasco, and I hope I shall succeed in it. So the news was spreading that Charles Cameron was in need of jasper tablets. The photographs show that the tablets installed in the bedroom included three of Hawksford's four subjects, the sacrifice to Bacchus and the pair of Apollo and the Muses. It looks as though the tablets which Hawksford needed to sell became some of those which Cameron needed to buy. Wedgwood's letter of apology to Kappa is dated September 1787. The oven book for 1787 has no entries for tablets which match what was in the bedroom. The tablets that he made for him after sending the apology were evidently not ready for firing before the end of that year. The oven book for 1788, unfortunately, is lost. So we have no record of their firing. Kappa's mention of them in his letter of January 1789 is the only evidence that they existed, apart, of course, from the photographs of them in situ in the bedroom. There are major differences between what Cameron ordered and what he eventually used. 
The largest tablets he used, three or perhaps four of them, were no larger than 20 or 21 inches, although he had at first asked for six much larger ones. If you work out the whole order in square inches, Cameron initially ordered almost four times as much jasper as he ended up with. We have seen that the oven books show hardly any tablets with a fired size of over 21 inches being made before 1786. In the summer of 1787, after Wedgwood had received Kappa's spring order, the oven books show something quite extraordinary happening. For the 31st of August and 7th of September, there is an entry, one tablet, blue ground, 30 by 13 inches, Diana, etc., and three trees put to. This is the Diana tablet in the Lady Lever Art Gallery. After firing, its length has shrunk down to just over 27 inches. It shows the virgin goddess who has put Endymion to sleep so that she can secretly steal a kiss from him. It's the perfect subject for decorating a bedroom. It's also technically amazing. We're looking at it from one end down from the narrow end and you can see it's less than half an inch thick. Another of these, or possibly the same one the second time, was fired successfully in the weeks of the 26th of October and the 2nd of November. One tablet, 30 by 13 inches, blue ground, Diana with trees and drapery, festoons, etc., and undercut. A third very large tablet was fired in the weeks of the 17th and 24th of August. One tablet, blue ground, 30 by 13 inches, with trees, etc., put to and undercut, but with no subject mentioned, which probably means that the clerk did not recognize the subject. Only one other tablet as big as the Diana tablet is known, and that is this one, acquired by the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, in 2015. It is number 206 in Wedgwood's catalogue, The Birth of Bacchus, one of the subjects Kappa had ordered in spring 1787, 27 inches long, just as he had specified. So these two tablets are the largest Jasper tablets that Wedgwood had ever made and the largest that he would ever make. I conclude that Wedgwood made these two tablets specifically for the Empress's bedroom. They are most likely to be the two subjects which he mentioned in his letter of the 18th of September as having got out of the kiln good. But neither of them ever made it into the Empress's bedroom. Why not? Kappa had ordered four very big tablets, but Wedgwood had only reported that he'd made two and he hadn't delivered them yet. What confidence could Cameron have that Wedgwood, having failed to deliver in 1787, would deliver the following year? Sadly, the correspondence doesn't survive. The best evidence, again, is the tablets that ended up in the bedroom, smaller than the ones Cameron originally ordered. It seems that Cameron changed his mind and belatedly followed Wedgwood's suggestion in his letter of July 1786 that it was the great size of the tablets that was the problem and that production would be more straightforward if they were smaller. That would be a good reason for using Hawksford's sacrifice to Bacchus tablet and for ordering 20-inch tablets to match its size instead of the originally planned much larger ones. But Cameron can only have achieved the careful symmetrical arrangement seen in the bedroom by rethinking what he required from Wedgwood. He cannot have achieved it just by amassing odd Jasper tablets which shops in St. Petersburg happened to have in stock. The tablets had to be in pairs, fours and sixes which matched in size. Wedgwood usually made two examples of any object to reduce the risk in case of the many possible accidents in manufacture, firing, drying, storage and transport. Wedgwood was also a perfectionist. His apologetic letter of September 1787 shows he was deeply disappointed. 
was the idea for the room that of Cameron or the Empress? It has to be more likely that the idea was that of the Empress. She had a track record of patronising Wedgwood. First the husk service of 1770, then the frog service of 1774. Cameron's initial request for 28-inch tablets sounds like the Empress asking how large the biggest tablets were and then wanting the largest size or a bit bigger. The idea behind the boom was a restrained neoclassical update of that great Baroque invention, the porcelain room. This would have been more obvious if there had been almost four times as much jasper as Cameron originally intended. His original scheme for the bedroom envisaged some 24 jasper tablets of at least 21 inches in size. Even in the revised version, with the probable 14 tablets, it was the outstanding example of Wedgwood jasper used for interior decoration. Despite its destruction, the room features in all modern works on Wedgwood. Not until now, however, has the original specification for the tablets been identified as the work of Charles Cameron. This reveals how much grander his original plan was and how he had to reduce its scope. It also accounts for Wedgwood's determination to make the largest jasper tablets he would ever produce. The double irony is that they were never installed in the room for which he intended them, but that if they had been, they would have been blown to bits with the rest of the room. Instead, they survive miraculously in the Lady Lever Art Gallery and the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. The Empress's nephew and successor, Archduke Paul, and his wife, Maria Fyodorovna, were clearly impressed by the Wedgwood in the bedroom. They had already acquired a taste for French furniture inlaid with Wedgwood jasper. In 1782, they had made a private visit to Paris under the transparent disguise of the Count and Countess of the North. The Marchand Mercier, from whom they bought the most, was Dominique Daguerre. One of Daguerre's specialities was, of course, furniture inlaid with Wedgwood jasper. In the 1780s, Daguerre and his partner, Martin Eloi Lignereux, became the most important French purchasers of Wedgwood tablets. Not long after the Empress's bedroom was installed, Archduke Paul and his wife began ordering French furniture inlaid with unusually large Wedgwood tablets. As the 1790s proceeded, large tablets became harder to find. Wedgwood stopped making them, and France declared war on Britain. But the demand from the Russian court for French furniture inlaid with Wedgwood jasper continued. The war separated Daguerre in London from his partner, Lignereux, in Paris. Despite the war, Lignereux continued to sell Wedgwood. He must have kept stock from some years earlier. It seems very likely that it was the old stock of Lignereux which went into the furniture supplied to the Russian court. The evidence is the provenance of the birth of Bacchus tablet at Houston, which we have seen was made for Empress Catherine, but not used. The tablet was handed down in the Lignereux family. So Wedgwood, having failed to sell it to Russia, had sold it to Daguerre and Lignereux instead. Lignereux could have sent it to Russia, inlaid in a French marquetry commode for Archduke Paul. In that case, it would now be in Pavlovsk or the Hermitage. Instead, Lignereux decided to keep it for himself, perhaps because he knew that Wedgwood had never made a bigger Jasper tablet. Thank you.